Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com. And today I'm gonna to show you one more awesome thing that you can do with the warp tool. Because we've talked about using it to overlay graphics on top of your characters. We've talked about using it in combination with smart objects to do replaceable textures. But I've never shown you how to be extremely precise. Well, what if I told you you could make a circular graphic like this one, but it's not very hard. Well, believe it or not, that is going to be using the warp tool. So let's see how I'd approach something like that. I'd begin by making a single repeat unit. So I'll do that little curly Q there. And then I'm just going to sort of duplicate this a few times. And then once I have a few of those units, I can go a little quicker here. And this is going to be one half of my circle. So I want to keep that in mind when I consider how many of these repeat units I do. So maybe that's too many, but I'll just erase some of these away. Okay, now once I've got that, then I do free transform, right click, warp. And at this point you would say, oh, well, I have to move all these little handles and it's just kind of a challenge to be very accurate. Well, they have a hidden command up here that you might not know exists. Here where it says custom in the upper left hand corner, there are some very interesting presets. So what I'm gonna use is arc. And by default, it does this arc, which is not quite a hemisphere. And the reason for that is it is bend 50%. So I'm gonna increase that number all the way up to 100%. And you can see what happens here is exactly what I'm looking for. So when you confirm that, all you need to do is duplicate it, rotate it 180 degrees, and just connect these up to each other. And you have a very, very accurate circular graphic. So now I'll take a different pattern here and I'll do the same thing. So I'll do free transform, right click warp. And now let's take a look at this other one here. Bulge is interesting. This sort of gives it an inflated quality, which could be good depending on what your usage was. And it's also important to know that you can take this bend value into the negatives. So here I'm making it sort of like a negative 15, and you can see that you get sort of the opposite of a bulge. You might call this a pinch. But these presets give you some really fine control over some pretty common shapes. Now, while there are a bunch of presets, I really find these to be the most useful. Notice the difference between arch and arc. One of them has a sort of a radial symmetry as if it's being wrapped around like a wheel spokes, whereas the other one has sort of a verticality to it and is only being stretched on one axis, which just means that they're good for different reasons, although both I've found to be very useful because you can be so precise. Inflate is something that you can make through a variety of methods, but I found that the warp command is actually kind of the best for it. Now, it might not be immediately obvious why this would be useful to a digital painter, so I'm actually going to take two more videos the next two weeks and explain how this could work in sort of a concept art workflow. Because one of the things you need to do as a concept artist is save time, and I'm going to show you how to make what's called a trim sheet, and we'll use it to add detail to our environments. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.